What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and in today's video we're going to do some maintenance on our Kubota KX71 Mini Excavator. Now when we first bought this excavator we didn't know anything about them and we didn't know anything about maintaining them and it's a little bit intimidating because they're not the same as a car or a tractor. But when you boil it down there's not a lot of difference as far as the maintenance. Now we've already done the 500 hour maintenance and we have a video out on that and for the 500 hour maintenance you change the oil in the drive units down here that drive the tracks and you change the fuel filter. It's got a high pressure fuel filter and also a fuel water separator. And you change one of the hydraulic filters. You change the other one at a thousand hours when you actually change the hydraulic fluid in this machine. But we've had the machine about two years. We put about 200 hours on it. I was just looking at the placard which tells you the maintenance interval and it says, I think, every 500 hours to change the oil. But I don't like to go that long. It's been well over a year and about 120 hours or so. So I want to get this oil out of here, get some fresh oil in it. I'm going to show you how easy it is to change the oil in a mini excavator. It's definitely a do-it-yourself task, so let's get started. So maintenance intervals will be in your operator's manual. But on this excavator, they got a little placard right there underneath the seat. And that keeps it fresh in your mind. We've got a filter here ready to go with the hours and today's date on it. And we've got plenty of Kubota engine oil and then also some empty containers here to put our drain oil in. You'll see Miss Piney Grove and Bella, our Brittany Spaniel in the background. But accessing the engine is fairly easy. This lifts up in the back and it's actually lockable. So in case you're going down the road or you're trailering, you can lock it. But you can easily take this whole uh, cowling off. So we're going to do that just to give us more access and better lighting. There's just a little hairpin here that I pull. A little washer that I don't want to lose. And then I think this just slides sideways. And there we go, the cowling's off. See it's a simple diesel horizontally mounted engine. There's the oil fill right there. The oil dipstick is right there. The oil filter is there. That's the drain plug right there. So you can get to that from the bottom. And that takes a 14 millimeter wrench. So we're gonna just basically use two tools, a 14 millimeter wrench and an oil filter wrench and a funnel. So I guess that's three tools. I'll do my best to capture this and not get oil all over me. Hey Deb, can you find the dipstick above me there and open it so it'll let air in? I remember last time this was a little messy, but we'll see. It's loosen. All right, let's see how this goes. I don't recommend doing it this way as far as holding the, the pan, but for this video, I wanted to capture it. All right, put the plug back in so I can crawl in it out of here. Luckily, I had Miss Piney Grove here because I kind of got bound up holding the oil pan while it was draining, but I got the plug back in. Now, normally I wouldn't do it this way. I wouldn't be up under there holding the pan. I was trying to get a good angle so you could see how to drain it. But you can see if you pull that plug, follow the oil down to the ground so that you get it up under the stream. But most of the oil is out. I'm just going to take the plug out and get the rest of it. Hope I got the pan in the right place. All right, we're going to let that finish draining and now take off the oil filter. It's hot here, guys. You can see Bella parked herself right in front of the fan once Deb turned it on. I've got the drain plug back in, but before I take off the oil filter, I'm going to go ahead and put this drain oil in this empty container. And if you didn't know, most auto zones and advanced auto parts will take your drain oil. So definitely recycle it. Don't dump it out on the ground or do anything foolish like that. The next step is taking off that filter. I'm gonna try and get it from the bottom so that the camera can capture it. All right, it's loose by hand. I don't know if any oil is gonna come out from the top of the filter. We'll see here in a second. All right, here comes some on my hand now. Wasn't fast enough to get it off before it came over the top of the filter. Gosh, it's got a lot of threads. Okay, there we go. So I've got the oil filter off and I've cleaned off any areas where oil might have spilled like underneath the engine cowling here, up under here. That way I know if I have an oil leak in the future that it's a real oil leak and not oil that I spilled. Now I'm gonna do something here that um, some people say isn't beneficial or 
it doesn't matter if you do it or not. I, this won't hurt at all. But what I try to do, especially on filters that you can put in a vertical position, I try to like pre-charge the filter with some oil. Now, some people say that makes no difference in startup. It's not going to make your engine last longer. Or um, if you don't do this, your engine won't last less long. Um, but I just like to do it on filters I can put like this. Now, a horizontal filter, you can't really do this too much because the oil will leak out when you're putting the filter on. But put your thoughts down below. Do you pre-charge your filters with oil if you can? And then, of course, I'm taking some fresh, clean oil and putting on the gasket here so that when it mates to the surface, it'll slide easy and have a good seal. I'll put it on the threads and I'll tighten it till it contacts and then I'll just hand tighten it past that, usually about three quarters of a turn. You can just tell when you've gotten it as tight as you can by hand and that's good enough. Here I'll put the oil filter up against the threads. Got it started, turns real easy until it stops. And then I just hand tighten it three quarters of a turn or so past that point and that filter's on can see that I've put the hours and the date like in three places on the filter. The drain plug is tight, the fuel filter's on and tight, and now we're going to put some oil in her. Take off the fill cap right here, and I clean my funnel real good. I don't want to put any contaminants in this fresh oil. So we're gonna pour that whole first gallon in there. I didn't bring my long stemmed funnel. I just have this short one, but it, it'll work fine. And we pre-charged the filter, so we'll put this in and then see what the dipstick says. I always use genuine Kubota 15W40. That's what they want you to use in their diesel engines. But I always use Kubota oil. I know you can look at the specifications of the oil and get different brands, maybe save a buck or two, but I just don't do it. I buy my oil, genuine Kubota oil from the dealer not only because I want what uh, the manufacturer makes, but also to support my local dealer. I know a lot of people think dealers are expensive, and, and they are, but they got to eat too. All right, let's clean this dipstick off. See where we're at. We should be just under a quart low is what I'm guessing. See what she says. All right, that says, all right, there's low and there's high. That's right in the middle. You can see the high side in the low side and we're right in the middle. Take my funnel out of here, put the cap on, and put the dipstick in and start it up. That way I'll make sure no contaminants go back in the oil. Start it up and we'll check it again. Here goes nothing. It won't take long for that oil to circulate. All right guys, I've done my mental check. Uh, everything that I've touched, make sure that I've put that back. So I'm looking at the drain plug, that's tight, filter's tight. No leaks on that little bit of run-up. There's no leaks. I've got the fill uh, plug in, and I've got the dipstick in, and that's it. The oil has changed on our mini excavator. So as you can see, it's a fairly simple process. It's probably 30 minutes or less, and probably saved me around $100 in labor versus taking it to the dealer, in addition to having to load it up on a trailer and take it there, and then the weight, and then go back and pick it up. So it not only saves money, but it saves time, keeps the excavator here on Piney Grove where we need it. But hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you would, after watching this one, watch another Piney Grove video. YouTube really likes that. It helps out the algorithm and helps them promote our channel more. But until next time, folks, you all take care out there. And remember, life's short, tractor hard.